Thursday night is here and brings us six games in the K and a ton of goals. My name is Andrea Sachinka and you're watching the LKHL Update. We're going to Magnitogorsk first where two powerhouses clash. Mallard plays Dynamo Moscow. And these two fill the net to the top. Three and a half minutes in, Nikita Iskov battles for the puck at the hash mark, shoots, and Sergei Mazakin buries the rebound. Leader for the period, Andre Alexeyev puts the puck on net from the point, Artyom like Dylan stops it, but Nick's English just beats him on the follow up chance. Less than a minute later, Dmitry Gagarolitsky beats Neil Tarasov from behind the net, and Tarasov scores his picks of the year from the slot. But Magnitsky tied up in the very next shift. The current tipping carries the puck through the neutral zone, takes a shot from the high slot, and he scores his second of the season. A few minutes later, Magnitsky grabbed the lead with the power play goal. Matt Alice and Sergei Mazakin set up what if Wolski at the far post, and Wolski doesn't miss. Just 22 seconds into the second period, the blue and white level it again. Rosa Heaton and fires it from the point, misses the net wide, and Gagarlitsky scores on the rebound off the end boards. Five minutes later, Magnitsky converted on a power play once again. This time it's Wolski and Mazakin who gets that assist while Matt Allison finds the back of the net. Over to the period, Adam will make it a 4-4 hockey game. Gagarlitsky can't score on the breakaway, but Vadim Shipachok finishes the job for him. Tight game of 40. 11 minutes into the third period, Sergei Mazakin puts Magnitka back in the lead. That's his fifth goal of the season and fourth point of the night. But less than a minute later, Dynamo score another one to bring it back to even. Shipachov finishes off a great passing play while Tavarolitsky and Linder should draw the assist. It goes to overtime and Matt Allison ends it just over two minutes in. Crazy play to cap off an insane game. Allison enjoys his second overtime winner of the season and Magnitsky could take it 6-5 on home ice. Travel to Yekaterinburg now, where Afton Belis look to keep their perfect record going as they face Severstal. To pick it up from the second, two and a half minutes in, Nigel Doss slides the puck to Ivan Vishnevsky and Vishnevsky sends a bomb past Dominic Ford. Vishnevsky has his first goal of the season and it's one nothing up on the list. Late in the period, home team converts on a power play to double their lead. Nigel Doss gets the goal off Stefan Da Costa and Francis Barret draw the assist. 30 seconds into the third period, Da Costa circles the net and scores his sixth of the year on the wraparound to make it 3-0. Five minutes later, Da scores his second of the game on a two-man advantage. There's no coming back from that. Jakob Kovar stops 26 shots for his sixth shot out of the year, and after Ambilis win their 11th consecutive game, 4-0 is your final. We'll wrap up our Euro trip with the game in Chelyabinsk. Tractor lets him up against Lokomotiv tonight. Onkin gets on the board first in this one. Zorisayev sends a long pass to Alexander Rubakov, who gets in on a breakaway and scores his first goal of the season. 1 0 Tractor. Loco get back even before the intermission. The kids get the job done. Denis Alexeyev and Arthur Kayumov get the assist while the New York Titans scores his first career KHL goal. Early in the second period, Loco grabbed the lead. Oshikura cuffs up the puck of the breakout and Stepan Sanikov doesn't think twice, it's in the back of the net. And that's all they're gonna need tonight. Loco beat Tractor on the road for the first time since 2014. 2-1 is the final. We're off to Moscow now, where would Army meet the arch rival Spartak? The red and blue open up the score in 8 minutes in with a power play marker. Matt Robinson sets up Pika Grigorenko in the right circle and Grigorenko roofs it with a one-timer. Early in the second period, Red Army gets the third power play of the night and they can burn in it as well. Pika Grigorenko nets the second of the game with yet another one-timer. Spartak slides that 2 0 lead in half meet with the third period. They rush down the ice for a counter attack. Yuli Zuba feeds Alex Koklachev, and Koko nets his sixth of the season. But it's all in vain. Red Army hold on to the flimsy one goal lead and take two points on home ice. 2 1 is your final.
where now in Regal Latvia where Dynamo do battle with Sochi. Onkin gets a cold shower earlier in the game. Just over two minutes in, Kiroka Pustin finds Luz Park in the slot and sends it past Pustin's with Leskis for his second of the year. Eight minutes later, Joanna V2 puts the puck on net off the boards and Nikita Pachiski takes it home. That ends the net for Gudleskis who allows two goals on six shots and Timur Bilalov takes his place in net. Fast forward to midway through the third. Dynamo steal down by two but they're on the power play and have the extra attacker out. Matthew Mayana gives the puck to Linus Fidel and Fidel sends it in on the short side. Dynamo are back in it. The hope is short lived though. Less than a minute later, Sochi scored on a power play as well and restored it to a goal margin. Nikita Shitov beats Timur Bilala for a second. One year old rookie Damir Rukimulin puts it in the bag a little later as he scores his first career KHL goal on the empty net. Dynamo still have no wins on home ice against Sochi in KHL history. Sochi 4, Dynamo 1. We go to Bratislava, Slovakia for our last game of the day. Slovan defend the ice against Jokiric. And it's another goal fast. Just out of 6 minutes in, Slovan convert in a power play. Lord of Cervana finds the back of the net with a tip in. The Jester start up 10 minutes later. Harry Maninen sets up Pekka Jormaka and he sends it in from the high slot. Less than 2 minutes later, Slovan regained the lead as Ivan Svarny scores his initial goal of the season. Adam Lischke and Kalchuk Tura with the assists. Jokiri get back even 6 minutes into the second period. Sakari Maninin has his fifth goal of the year while both teams were down a man. Later in the period, Slovan get the third lead of the game. Michael Sersen hits the twine of a cleanly one face off by Jeff Tate. And then Jokiri explodes with three unanswered goals early in the third period. Just 42 seconds into it, Marco Antila gets in on a breakaway and scores his fifth of the year. That comes short handed. Four minutes later, Henry Ikenen scores his first goal of the season as he sends a dart past Jakob Stepanek. That gives Jokiri their first lead of the game. And about a minute later, Sakari Maninen scores another one to add some security to the lead. Maninen racks up four points on Jokiri's five goals and that proves to be the difference. The Jesters remain on top of the Western Conference as they take it 5-3 on the road. And that's it for your KHL update, but do come back tomorrow for six more games, including Akbar Samor and SKS and Petersburg versus Avangard. My name is Andrea Sashinka, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.